All right, guys, make sure you have less than one out, please. Um, make sure that you are copying down what we are talking about. You will need to turn this back in as part of your grade. So make sure that you are copying down everything that we are doing. All right, so let's look at our opening exercise. The opening exercise says this. Joe and Marty are in the park playing catch. Tony joins them, and the boys want to stand so that the distance between any two of them is the same. Where do they stand? How do they figure out this precisely? What tool or tools could they use? All right, so we need to look at what we know and what it is it's asking us to do. All right, so it says that you've got two people that are at the park, and they are playing catch. You've got a third one that joins, and they want to stand so that the distance between any two of them is the same. So in other words, they want to make sure that Joe and Tony have the same distance as Marty and Tony, or Joe and Marty. So how do they figure this out? Where do they stand? So um, how do they figure this out precisely? What kind of tools could they use? Well, obviously, I'm sure that we're not carrying around a ruler or a yardstick or a tape measure. So they're going to have to get creative. So they can use footsteps to figure out if the space is the same. All right, so they can measure it out with some, using someone's footsteps. suggest that someone could lay down. All right, but let's think about what it would look like if we want to make sure they have the same space. So let's say that I have Joe here, and let's say I put Marty here. How do I assure that the same space is between Joe and Marty, Marty and Tony, and Joe and Tony? Where would Tony have to go? Well, Tony would have to go over here somewhere. So then we would make sure that our space between the three of them is equal. All right, let's look at the second part of this. The second part says, fill in the blanks below as each term is discussed. All right, um, so the blank between point A and B is a set consisting of A, B, and all points on the line A, B between A and B. All right, so what that is talking about is it's talking about, let's say I have point A, and let's say I have point B. I'm looking at everything that is between A and B, including A and B. So that would be what we call a segment. A segment from the center of the circle to a point on the circle. So if I'm looking at a circle, and I'm looking at the center, and I'm looking at a, a segment from the center of the circle to a point on the circle, we should know what this is, but we call that the radius. Given a point C in the plane and a number R is greater than zero, the blank with center C and radius R is the set of all points in the plane that are distant R from point C. All right, so I've got point C here, and I've got a number that's greater than zero. So the blank with center C 
That should be a key. Center C and radius R. What do we know? Uh, what figure do we know that has a center and a radius? That would be a circle. Note that because a circle is defined in terms of distance r, we will often use a distance when naming the radius. Example, radius AB. However, we may also refer to a specific segment as in radius segment AB. Now, this lesson is not an extremely long lesson. Um, it's just kind of an introduction. So, um, it won't take us long to finish this up. You will need a compass and a straight edge. Um, if you do not have a compass, some of you got compasses in your bags. Um, if, you did, if you do not have a compass and you need one, and you can't get one, please let me know. I will see what we can do. Um, you will need compasses throughout this year. So it is something that you're going to need. So you do need a compass, which is this thing right here. You can buy them different types. Some have pointer edges. Some are plastic. This one's metal. So you need a compass. And you need a straight edge. Um, a straight edge is simply um, something that allows you to draw a straight line. It may not have numbers on it. In this case, I'm using a ruler, but we are not going to use the actual measurements for this. Alright, so let's see what it says. It says, Margie has three cats. She has heard that cats in a room position themselves at equal distances from one another and wants to test that theory. Margie notices that Simon, her tabby cat, is in the center of her bed at S. All right, so here is, um, they've already marked it for us. This is Simon. Jojo, her Siamese, is lying on her desk chair at J. So here is Jojo. If the theory is true, where will she find Mac, her calico cat? Use the scale drawing of Margie's room shown below together with only a compass and a straight edge. Place an M where Mac will be if the theory is true. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. What's the one thing I need to know? Well, first of all, it says that cats place themselves at equal distances. So if that's the case, then I need to know what is the distance between Jojo and Simon. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to put one part of my compass on Jojo and one part of my compass on Simon. And I'm going to measure that distance with my compass. Guys, you have to know how to use a compass, so do not cheat with a ruler. That is not going to work. Now that I know where the dis what the distance is between Simon and Jojo, I'm going to put my pointy edge of my compass on Jojo. Okay? And I am going to draw... A line. Okay? So if I put my compass on Jojo, then I'm going to draw a half circle here. Without moving the compass position, I am going to put my compass on the middle of Simon, and I am going to draw a half circle. Okay? And what do you notice? You notice that your two half circles meet at a point, which means that that is where Mac will be. 
and that gives me equal distances between all three cats. If you're having trouble with the compass, guys, practice. It takes practice. I promise it will become easier. Don't get frustrated with it. It is just something that you have to work with. All right, the rest of this lesson is a little bit of reading, and I want you to um, really pay attention to this. Um, Euclid, um, we're going to look at his proposition. Um, this is how Euclid approached the problem. Um, look at his first proposition and then compare his steps with yours. So let's, say, let's see what he said. He says, to construct an equilateral triangle on a given finite straight line. All right, if you didn't realize, if I actually connect my three cats, you will see that I create a triangle. Now, the one thing you need to know is if the cats are all three equal distances, that means all three sides of this triangle would be equal, which in turn makes it an equilateral triangle. All right, so he says, in order to create an equilateral triangle on a given finite straight line, let AB be the given finite straight line, right here. It's given. And if you think about that, we had JoJo and we had Samson. That was our given finite line. So it is required to construct an equilateral triangle on the straight line AB. So that means we have to use AB to help create our equilateral triangle. Let the circle BCD with center A and radius AB have been drawn. And again, let the circle ACE with center B and radius BA have been drawn. All right, so in other words, they went ahead and drew full circles. Now, our paper was not big enough to draw full circles. We drew half circles. Let the straight lines CA and CB have been joined from the point C, where the circles cut one another, to the points A and B. So it says, okay, here we go. We've got a point that comes together. And since point A is the center of the circle, CBB, AC is equal to AB. So it tell, it's telling me that since... Um, I know that point A is the center of this circle, then it has to mean that these two sides are equal. Alright? I lost my place. And since B is the center of circle CAE, BC has to be equal to BA. But CA was also known to be equal to AB. So since CA and CB are equal to AB, but things equal to the same thing are also equal to another. So what that's telling me is, since I know that these two sides are equal, and I know these two sides are equal, since they're both equal to the same side, I know that CA is equal to CB. Alright, so therefore I know that all three sides are equal. So the triangle ABC is equilateral and has been constructed on a given finite straight line AB. Okay? Now, for your homework tonight, you're going to have a question, which is why we're not going to finish this part right here. Um, but what you need to do is you need to compare your steps with Euclid's. All right, so you need to go back through here and kind of write down the steps that you took in creating that triangle because part of your homework um, tomorrow will be 
creating step-by-step -step how to do an equilateral triangle. All right, geometry assumptions. I told you this lesson was really short. It's a lot of reading. Um, so I want you to kind of just look at this. In geometry, as in most fields, there are specific facts and definitions that we assume to be true. In any logical system, it helps to identify these assumptions as early as possible since the corrections of any proof hinges upon the truth of our assumptions. For example, in Proposition 1, when Euclid says, let AB be the given finite straight line, he assumed that given any two distant points, or any two distinct points, there is exactly one line that contains them. A course that assumes we have two points. It is best if we assume there are points in a plane as well. Every plane contains at least three non-collinear points. All right, so guys, here's um, some pretty important information. All right, um, given any two distinct points, there's exactly one line that contains them. That's another part of um, pretty important information. Euclid continued on to show that the measure of each of these three sides of his triangle are equal. It makes sense to discuss the measure of a segment in terms of distance. To every pair of points A and B, there corresponds a real number distance called the distance from A to B. All right, so when I have two points, then when I have those two points, it tells me that there's going to be a distance. I can measure some sort of distance that has to be greater than or equal to zero. And we call that the distance from A to B. Since the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from B to A, we can interchange A and B. Okay? So AB is the same as BA. Using distance, we can also assume that every line has a coordinate system which just means that we can think of any line in a plane as a number line. Here's how. Given a line, L, pick a point A on L to be 0, and find the two points B and C such that the distance of AB is equal to the distance of AC, or 1. Label one of these points to be 1, say point B, which means the other point C corresponds to negative 1. So what this is saying, guys, is if I take a point, it says take a point and let A, and we're going to label that 0. And it says, um, now pick a point B so that the distance of A to B is the same as A to C. So if I want a distance between A and B to be the same as the distance of A to C, that means C has to be over here. And now I can look at this as a number line. So since this is a number line, 0, I can label this 1. And then that means if it's on a number line, anything to the left of 0 would be negative. That's all that's saying. Okay? All right. You have a lot of vocabulary here. Please make sure that you go through that vocabulary. Guys, it is super important. This vocabulary will build the basis of our geometry this year. So you need to know what it means to be given a, or a geometric construction, which is what we just did. We constructed an equilateral triangle. A figure, a two-dimensional figure, is a set of points on a plane. That can be a line, a triangle, a rectangle, a square. All right, know the definition of an equilateral triangle. Collinear, all right, it's important you hear that word, collinear. That means there are three or more points on the line. Um, the, there's a line containing all those points. So if they're collinear, that means I can draw a line straight through them, and I'm going to hit every one of them, okay? Now, let's say that I have these four.
four points. I cannot draw a straight line and connect all four points. Yes, I can draw a straight line from point A to point B, but that, that straight line does not contain my other two points. So these would be non-collinear. Um, make sure you read through length of segment. All right, it gives you some examples. And the coordinate system on a line. Um, guys, we know what coordinate systems are. We have a point A, point B. All right, so that's just telling us that every line has a coordinate system. Make sure you read through these definitions, guys. They're very, very important. Hope you have a great night.